Mighty number nine is finally out. After almost taking three years since September 2nd of 2013, with many delays on its release and such, till June 21st of 2016, we're gonna check out Mighty Number no. 9 to see, is it worth it? Mighty Number no. 9! Mighty Number no. 9! Okay, some backstory time. Mega Man is a classic side-scrolling shoot-'em-up game that many of the backers of Mighty No. 9 are fans of. I'm not a huge fan of the whole series myself, but I enjoyed playing the original Mega Man game, the Mega Man X game, the Battle Network game, and whatever Mega Man-related game. It's a fun series that, unfortunately, for a long time, Capcom... <laughs> Sorry, let me change something. Ah, there we go. For a long time, Crapcom didn't do anything for the Blue Bomber except cancel Mega Man Legends 3, which I was not hyped for, but a majority of you were. And that was just a load of Crapcom. Well, they did make Mega Man's 9 and 10, but let's stay on topic now. So, when there was a Kickstarter for a Mega Man-like game by the producer of the original Mega Man games, Keiji Inafune, everyone backed the game, which we all now know as Mighty No. 9, as a big fuck you to Crapcom. Okay, so maybe that's not the exact reason why I was successfully funded, but seriously, everyone did want a new Mega Man game, so they backed the game up like crazy. I wasn't crazy about the game, but I did want to support something that would give the fans what they want, and hey, I wanted to see what kind of Mega Man game it would be if it went through a different direction, unrestricted by crap. Calm. Now, it's a good thing that I wasn't crazy about the game, because like I said earlier, there have been many delays on the game's release, and not many of the backers were happy about it. I'm just glad I wasn't ripped off. Or was I? Well, the game didn't live up to the hype surrounding it, so clearly the game has failed on that account. It got decent scores while also getting backlash and a whole bunch of controversy that I'm not too familiar with, so I won't talk about it much. Mainly because I don't care, and I just hope the game is good. Okay, first of all, is the game as bad as people claim it is? My answer? No. It's not bad at all. But is it great? Eh, unfortunately, same answer. No, it's not that great. But. The game is just not bad. It's okay. It's playable. It's functional. It's a 5 to 6 out of 10, or a 5.5 out of 10 if I had to score it, which I usually don't. Well, let's break down the game. The story. The story is, while everything was all peaceful, the robots one day suddenly have gone haywire and are causing havoc and mayhem around the city. Wow, I've never heard of a plot like that before. Except, uh, I did hear about it like about a hundred times from, oh, I don't know, a Mega Man game? Seriously, fuck you. The plot is really forgettable if you've basically played any of the original Mega Man games. Guess how many robots have gone haywire that you have to take care of? Jeez, I wonder is this game gonna have eight robots like from the Mega Man games? Oh, look, there it is, eight Robot Masters. Oh, what a fucking surprise. I never would have figured that out from playing the Mega Man games, right? Jeez, I wonder do I have to stop them like in the Mega Man- Oh, you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna sum it all up in one image. Wake me when they start reusing the Mega Man plots. Well, let's be honest and fair. What story could they have gone with that wouldn't have copied the Mega Man story format? Nothing. And I'm not saying that to excuse the game for its lack of originality, but there's really not much you could do with a Mega Man story that we haven't already seen, with robots and, you know, them going haywire and whatnot. Yeah. Long story short, you've probably already heard this type of story in some shape or form. The English dub in the game is either laughable or just bad for the characters. The Japanese voices are tolerable, also according to a source of many ninjas, there was some translation butchering in the game, which I didn't quite notice, but I did always feel that there was something wrong with the dialogue. Personally, I just don't give a crap calm about the characters and whatever they're trying to accomplish. I just want some action to happen. Not that kind of action. And what's up with your hair? It looks like someone ate some Hershey chocolate bar, had diarrhea, shat all over your head, and molded it into a Ferrero Rocher. 
fudge, now I can't get that out of my head, that this guy's hair looks like a chocolate crunchy Ferrero Rocher. I wonder was the character designer eating one when he was designing that guy's hair, like, hmm, what hair design should I have for this guy? Ferrero Rocher for his hair! Speaking of looks, the game looks decent, clean, and overall not bad. Not original or as bland as I was told by people. The environments look good, the character models look like a cross between combining the art style of the Pokemon games and making it 3D with the Miis. Overall, I had no problems with how the game looks, though at times it looks like an online 3D Flash game or some Korean MMO graphics, but otherwise presentable for the most part. It makes me wonder, would it look better if it was in just flat out 2D, because I'd appreciate that more. Keeping it retro, baby! The only problem I had with the graphics, and it's minor, is that everyone's mouths just drop open to indicate talking, which I find is kind of lazy and distracting, because it looks like a DUDE face. And the camera perspective during gameplay. During my playthrough, I died quite a bit because due to a lack of perspective, I thought I was in a safe zone, but I ended up hitting the spikes and or instant death. It's not a big deal, but fuck off. In a 2D game, I would have definitely avoided it, or if I had died, at least it was my fault. But let's forget about it and move on to the forgettable music. This is subjective, but I find the music, much like the story, forgettable. However, there is an option to turn the music retro, which makes it more memorable. But otherwise, the gameplay drowns out the music, I find. I mean, at least in each of the Mega Man games, there's at least one memorable track that everyone knows and loves. I'm not saying the music is bad, it's just that I don't remember it that well. Though I do feel bad for the composer, Manami Matsume, who, if you didn't know, composed a lot of the original Mega Man music. To hear that the music is forgettable? Go Mega Man Sai. Okay, I lied a little bit. The title music is probably the most memorable track in the entire game, but it sounds an awful lot like the opening to Please Teacher. So, we have a story that's forgettable and unoriginal, decent graphic presentations, and forgettable music. Sorry. Well, hopefully the gameplay at least makes up for the majority of this game. I mean, that's why it's called gameplay, right? Plus, this is a project that everyone paid and funded in advance, so it better be good. But if you remember what I said earlier, the game's okay. It's playable. It's functional. It works. So where do I begin with this game? Well, since it's a spiritual successor to Mega Man, let's review it on the Mega Man grounds. Does it play like Mega Man? Yes, going through a level, fight a boss at the end, get their power, repeat till the end. But it's missing a few things that made Mega Man simple and fun, like the ease of selecting your special weapons from the pause menu, which you have to do in real time and it's not done well at all, having to fiddle around finding the right weapon for your current situation, or at least I had trouble with it. You also don't have a charge shot, which would have been, no, oh, I don't know, a very Mega Man-like mechanic, which I also imagine would be helpful in a spiritual Mega Man successor. You also can't slide by pressing down and jump. Instead, there's this dash mechanic that they made for this game. The concept. Ah, what an incredibly lame pun. You get it? Comcept sounds like concept, because that was the play. Oh, okay. Fuck you. Hmm, the concept behind this game's gameplay is when you shoot enemies, they can be weakened to the point where you can dash into them to absorb their cells, spelled XEL and finishing them off like that. You also gain boosters from them, like more firepower, speed, defense, and it also refills your special weapons, so no more grinding for weapon refills, which I like. Do you have to do this? No, you can do it the old way of Mega Man, where you shoot till they explode, but that takes longer and you don't get any of the benefits from dashing into them. A couple of people I heard didn't like the dash mechanic. Personally, I thought it was okay and that it also aimed towards a more speedrunner type of game. I guess you could sing a Christmas carol about Mighty No. 9. Dashing through the game, in an average Mega Man game. It started on Kickstarter and failed to live up to the hype. The dashing gimmick works fine during the stage, though it gets really held back when you don't have a piercing weapon to go through multiple enemies to damage them to the point where you can absorb them all in a line. And it doesn't help that Beck's dash is not an attack, but that's not the most annoying part. 
I found the dash mechanic feels like a goddamn chore to do during boss fights and that I just want to blast the Robo Bastards. It's not even utilized that well with the eight Robot Masters. You damage them enough either through brute force or fine play where you do something effective against the boss, which is intriguing, and then you dash into them to reduce their health when it's flashing. Rinse and repeat, or else they get their health back if you take too long, which blows fucking ass. You know, if the dash mechanic also restored health, I think that would have been pretty cool, or at least if you can get an upgrade that would allow you to do that. Kind of like finding or getting an upgrade in the Mega Man games. Hmm. Well, are the Robot Master fights any good? This is subjective because some players may find some of them good and some of them bad. I'm gonna say half and half of the Robot Masters are good and bad because I swear that some of them you have to have the weapon weakness or you just won't survive. There is a mechanic where if you die enough in the game, the game will try and help you by giving you power-ups like Ed did in the Mega Man games, which it does throughout the game as well. But from my point of view, it was more babying than it is helping because it felt like a Oh, is the poor mighty no nice shucker having a hard time with the game? Well, here's some power hour up so you can beat the bossy wassy. Fuck you and fuck off game. And you can actually get the game to do that by turning off the assist option. So at least they gave you the option. Wish the robot would throw more one-ups instead. Or they gave me the option to have infinite lives, or not even bother with the live system because I really did not like or want to go through the stage again when I just want to focus on fighting the boss and learning their pattern. But I guess it's not a Mega Man game if they didn't do that, right? It's not that the stages are difficult, no thanks to the camera perspective in some parts, it's just that all the stages are okay, which makes them feel bland. Which makes me want to just fight the boss instead of going through the stage again because it's such a waste of time, especially with how okay it is. It becomes a chore after a while. The worst one is the auto scrolls stage. Those can go fuck themselves for all eternity, especially when it's done in the slowest possible way. So there's some advice to you developers out there about video game designing. Fuck limited life systems, auto-scrollers, don't waste the time I'm already wasting playing your games. Like this. Speaking of advice, there's an interesting mechanic I liked where if you have a certain boss defeated, they can help you in certain stages, which is also a clue to which weapon the boss is weak to, so that's a nice design choice there that I liked. Also, the game is fat because of what Dynatron did in her scene, and I'm not gonna say what it is, but for those of you who know me, know what I'm talking about. Fuck you, Inafune, fuck you. Zero- Zero out of ten, game's too fat. Fuck you. At least you can skip the boss introductions to an extent, so thank you for that. What I'm not thankful for is some of the pixel perfection needed to get past certain obstacles, like reaching the maximum height of your jump to avoid damage, or being close enough to an object to slide under and not die from it, the questionable hit detection sometimes... WHAT?! I DIED FROM WHAT?! Some control issues that don't do what I tell the game to do, or it does something that I didn't tell it to do... Ah, oh, just drop the fuck down! The lack of real E-Tanks which exist in the game but aren't obvious at first, which you lose them if you die, which really sucks, and can't quite be collected like in the Mega Man games. Certain checkpoint placements like during Brandish's stage are kind of ass, but for the most part, most of the checkpoints are placed in a reasonable area. And certainly not the least of the things I'm not thankful for on this list is playing as Call in her own stage. Call's stage is fucking terrible. It's just not fun because Call isn't like Beck, so her stages are really slow to go through, and her combat is just so slow compared to what you've gotten used to so far at this point. I'd rather go through the challenge stages, which I almost never do in any game because blah, waste of time. But there are some fun challenge stages in the game where you're trying to speed through some custom-made challenges, and I like those. Not so much the Smash Bros. target stages or speedrunning the main stages, which I find lazy. I also found the Ray DLC lazing around in my copy of the game, and I'm pretty sure every copy I've seen also has it. Ray is essentially Zero with a hint of Proto Man and Bass combined. You've got the sword slashing of Zero, the Proto Man life problem of Ray constantly losing health, and the design of Zero and Bass for the head. I gotta say, I legitimately had fun playing as Ray over Beck in the beginning. Until it was ruined! You know, I was starting to actually enjoy this game, and then it's like, fuck you. Ray started out being a lot of fun because one, you can spam her sword attack, and her dash is actually an attack unlike Beck who gets hurt if he tries dashing into enemies, which allows you to do something silly but cool like this. Okay, let's just go back to Bezaka Barrage. The 
part where it started not being fun is when I started facing the last two thirds of certain bosses, which turned into a serious pain in the thumb, especially with your health dropping, realizing that Ray puts herself at risk getting hit using a sword, not having a projectile weapon, and then it just got horrible at the end with the final boss, which I did not end up liking either as Beck or Ray. But Ray had it worse. Oh, fucking cheated! So fucking cheated! So despite me getting pissed off at the game a whole lot, I still found the game to be okay. Pissed, but okay. But in the end, we must look at the big picture. This game is a colossal fail in terms of not living up to its hype and expectation of the fans, which probably expected too much, and not living up to the pedigree of its maker, who at first seemed like they were onto something great, but then through some bad management or whatever, and getting chewed out by the fans, they gave us what we have now. Take with it what you will, but what do I think of Mighty No 9? Well, it's certainly not a mighty title, just an okay title. First off, is the game good? Well, like I said earlier, it's okay. There are things I like in the game, like certain design elements, but the bad parts are things like good design choices that could have been in the game, but aren't, or ideas they had that could have been done better. Which, when you mix it all together, it just turns out an okay game. Nothing mighty, but nothing shitty. And if the game is really bad, I would have been calling it shitty number 9 all the way through in this video. Is the game price worth paying for? Well, for the money I paid for, it's okay. The game ranges from $25 to $35 depending on which platform you get it on, so at least it's not a full price game. Best value is on PlayStation with its cross-buy feature giving you three copies of the game. But most of all, is it worth it? Somewhat tough choice, but I'll say this, it's worth checking out once and never going back to ever again because I'm not playing the game again for a long time, especially with the final boss bullshit. Only really worth renting out for the weekend because the game is only three to four hours long and if you're a Mega Man fan you might get more out of it, but then again it is funded by Mega Man fans and they didn't like it, so chances are if you're a Mega Man fan you probably didn't like it, but don't let the hype and fandom blind you on this game. The game is just okay. It's average. Certainly not awesome like how the trailer claims it to be, and a massive fuck you in any other game that tells you what to think is awesome or how to have fun. So that's Mighty Number no. 9 on Is It Worth It? Would you say the game is worth it or not? You're the viewers and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more. See ya! Hey everyone, thanks for watching and hope you all enjoyed the video. Tell me what you thought of the review, it'd be great for feedback. Be sure to stay up to date on my Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube for my next game review. In the meantime, you can check out my previous videos like the ones I'm showing right now. Links to all that goodness is right in the description, or click the annotations if you're watching on YouTube. Okay, I lied a little bit. The title music is probably the most memorable track in the entire game, but it sounds an awful lot like the opening to Please Teacher. <laughs> that sounds so weird. <clears throat> the concept behind this game's gameplay is when you shoot enemies, they can be weakened to the point where you can dash into them. Hey